Hi, so today we'll be talking about um, setting up a daycare, a preschool, nursery school, um, crash, whatever it is they call it in your geographical location. And I know this is a video that many people have asked me for, and I've tried to do some in the past, so I'll just do that now that um, I have some time and I want to relax. You don't need a lot to start a daycare. However, you need a lot of love, you need a lot of care, you need a lot of attention to detail because you'll be dealing with lives, not necessarily files, as they say. So you'll be dealing a lot with um, two people's children. So it's very important that you put pen to paper and think about the reason why. Why do you want to have this daycare? Why do you want to set up the trash? Why do you want to do it? What's driving you? Um, if it's profits, just forget about it because um, if you're in this part of the world or in the neck of the woods, as some say, like uh, Africa, it might just frustrate you um, and you might just land yourself into trouble. So you must ensure that you have this duty of care, um, you love the children or you get someone who can do that uh, for you properly. So when you're doing, when you're planning to set up a daycare and you've done your paperwork already, because I'm not going to talk about paperwork right now, that's a, um, a whole different um, conversation on its own. So if you're thinking of setting up a daycare, um, do your paperwork, know what it is that you want to do, um, cross the T's and dot the I's, but people tend to ask me, like, what do I need to buy? What do you need to buy? And before you even start buying stuff, whatever where is it that you want to set up the daycare oftentimes you find people who just use um, the spare room in their homes or whatever and that doesn't happen only here in Nigeria or in Africa it happens home and abroad I've seen a lot of people they call it um, uh, it has a name who come back to me but they do get registered and they look after people um, children in their homes so it's not something that is exclusive to um, Africans. So think about safety. Think about hygiene. The environment that you want to have this daycare, um, is it a safe environment? Is it safe for children to be in? Are there pollutants around? Even in terms of security, you have to think about things like that. If there's an emergency, is there anyone to help you around? Um, is there anyone you can call? Is, can you shut the gates? Is this, you know, you just really have to think about safety. And when you're doing any project like as big as this, even if you have two or three children or you plan to have five children in the, in the in the space you must still ensure that your setting is safe there's entry there's exit um there's no pollution around there's no noise the children should be able to sleep at any time without having to um hear all sorts of noise and be traumatized by one thing or the other it should be very clean sanitary um in and out some people don't allow shoes into their um, crash. We don't either, anyway, because of the crawling babies moving around, um, just nice and clean for them. So you have to think about that. You have to think about ventilation. So if you notice, I'm not, I haven't started talking about what I'm going to buy. You just, first of all, need to get your setting right. You make sure that it's clean, it's hygienic, it's sanitary, there's air coming in, the lighting is beautiful and it's nice, it's not too harsh and it's not too dark, there's a nice fine balance there. You have to think about your windows, what do the windows look like? Sometimes if your babies are positioned near the windows or there's, uh, there are large windows, you must be able to regulate the light somehow. Some people have tinted windows. Some people use curtains, I don't recommend them, especially if the children can reach them. Some people use blinds just be mindful that children might be able to reach them at some at some point if they can't reach them then maybe you can um do that but if they can reach them it could be a hazard to a child so you want to think about that um make sure that your there are no obstacles and it's devoid of harm and those nails sticking out from anywhere the children can just um run out of the door and fall down um or just escape or whatever so you have little gates here and there just to make sure that they are safe. You have qualified people, experienced people that will work with your children. Very, very, very important that they are good hands. You don't want all those kind of people that are there to eat the children's food, eat their cellula, drink their milk, sleep, and all sorts of things. So you just have to make sure that the people that are there are trained. There are all sorts of trainings, but if you're training, if it's training here in this Nigeria, it's always nice to have your own internal training 
train your own culture and your own ways of doing things. Many years ago, we heard about a baby that went to a crash and um, they had sharpened some pencils and some, they used the blade for, for whatever reason. And this new baby just, and it was a broken blade. First day in school, she's put in her mouth and swallowed it. She act, actually had to have an operation. So we don't want to hear things like that. That is horrendous. Um, we saw the x-rays online being shared. People were sharing, you know, they share anything. They've been sharing anything for many years and it was quite horrendous to see. She did make it, but you can just imagine the trauma that the mother was going through on day one of school. So we don't want stuff like that. Um, you have to think about fire extinguishers and they must be serviced. Don't just put fire extinguishers and there are types of fire extinguishers. Don't just buy anyone. Make sure that they're tested periodically. Make sure that they're um, in good working order. I recommend smoke detectors as well because um, fire can start from somewhere that's not necessarily um, too close to you or, what, what, or you might not know about it. So make sure that that happens. Make sure that you have good people again, very, very good people um, that have their eyes on the job and their minds on the job and make sure that they are well trained. The same thing applies to security. Make sure that you screen them as much as you can. Screen the people that are working with the children, make sure they're in good health as well. And then, you see, I still haven't spoken about the things that you need to buy. Just buying of, of learning and, and learning materials or toys for children to play with. It's not the peak of starting a uh, daycare. People just believe, oh, what should I go and buy? Oh, let me buy the bed they're going to sleep on, the changing mat, the potties and stuff like that. Those are important. Those are pretty common sense things to buy. However, how are you going to maintain those things? How are you going to maintain the sheets? How are you going to ensure? What rules are you going to have? Are people going to bring their sheets to the school? Or are you going to provide sheets in the school and make sure that they are washed often? They are washed off and not when it was them once a month and not the one that the children are sharing their sheets and stuff like that. Everything should be unique to every child, but that's also a separate conversation. You have to make sure that you um, divide your your setting in such a way that there's an area, there's area for free play, area for learning, reading, area for feeding. You just have to demarcate everywhere. There should also be a changing area for the children. There should be good running water. There should be, um, you know, access to a lot of water and there should be sinks changing stations for the children again i haven't even started talking about all these toys that people like to buy teddy bears and the likes and all those teddy bears know that you have to wash them often as well because you know different children are touching it they're putting it in their mouth they can get sick from even having all those things in the environment some of them trap dust and some of these children we know that they have asthma they have all sorts of things happening um, to them, so you just want to be careful. You have to be, think of um, materials that will help them with their gross motor activities and their fine motor activities. What are those things that they're going to be picking and sorting? What are those things they're going to be climbing safely and make sure they don't hurt themselves? What's the nature of the material they're going to put on the floor in the um, setting? Because you don't want a child falling down, banging their head, or hurting themselves. You also don't want rugs on the floor where, when they're potty training, for example, they pee on the on the on the rug, and then it's just there. You can't clean it well enough. So you have to make sure that all these things are being considered as you set up your daycare for your for the children. You have to think about the cubicles that are going to keep their stuff. Their labels are going to go there, so that each person's materials and belongings, each baby's materials and belongings, are kept together in one area. Um, Make sure that the same applies to the learning materials, the shelves and the containers that you're going to put their learning materials or their toys. So all these things should really, really come into hand. The video is 9 and 30 seconds already. I don't like my videos going on for more than 10 minutes. So make sure that these are considered. If you want to find out anything else, put it in the comment section. But I think I've covered the major things. The things that you want the children to work with and buy, it's not really, really up to you in terms of the toys and in terms of the learning materials that you match up to the curriculum and the developmental goals that you want for the children. And there's so many, they're excessive. I could go on. All you need is a Google search or a chat GPT search, and it will tell you everything that you need um, in terms of what you need to buy. But having said that, make sure that also strong smells, your smells are not too strong. You are not using fragrances or uh, diffusers or air fresheners that are too strong for the children because it can really, really get in their, in their chest and, dist and disturb them. 
make sure that there's freedom of movement there's freedom of choice for the children in your setting and make sure that in all things that you put the children first and make sure that you have a routine structure to your day-to-day -day activities to make sure the children are learning they're growing and they are safe i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you found value in the video thank you so much don't get watched